Well, hello, my fellow sensitive people. Thank you for your patience while I get over this cold. I've been uh, drinking my juice and sleeping. So today is Wednesday and the energy, I said nine days we would begin to see real evidence of cannibalism breaking out, real dysfunction starting to happen in the GOP. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. One of the things I felt when I went into the energy on Sunday was that Kevin McCarthy had been receiving calls from members of the GOP that were basically saying that they were done. They were done with George Santos, the thing in the dress. There's more coming out about George Santos and people need to be uh, prepared for that. But suffice to say, he's on his way out. Remember what I said about George Santos. He could be there for three months. He's been there now for about two, three weeks. We could see him there for about two and a half to three months because that's how long it's going to take him to get out of there. But what it's doing until then is it's really helping to make Kevin McCarthy look really awful, and it's actually harming the GOP brand. A couple things that are coming out about George Santos. For starters, he was married to a one, woman under questionable, under questionable, uh, under a questionable situation. Did he pay her to marry him so that he could get a visa to remain in the United States? Also, Pedro. The man that he was involved with claims he was 18 years old at the time they were talking about getting engaged, which of course is going to lead reporters to the next question. If you were talking about getting engaged when Pedro was 18, how old was Pedro when you met him? So expect those uh, subjects to come up uh, over George Santos. Also in the next couple of months, uh, Brazil is going to be pushing for his extradition. Who in their right mind, who's a member of the GOP, would put their money on protecting George Santos from any kind of extradition back to Brazil? So what's happening is that Kevin McCarthy is becoming increasingly isolated from other members of the GOP as he attempts to hold on to this fragile coalition that probably is going to fall apart in the next two to three months. So have fun with this. Enjoy the process. You don't have to eat popcorn. You could switch to something like, you know, hummus or pretzels or, you know, whatever. Uh, another thing that we're looking at, of course, has to do with Donald Trump. He's now facing uh, indictment probably from uh, Georgia. I can't off the top of my, uh, what is her name? Uh, Every time, I go every time I go live and record these, uh, Willis, Fan Fanny Willis, is that correct? Uh, so they're looking at possibly five indictments at least. So some of the people that are on the list to face possible indictments out of Georgia include uh, Rudy Giuliano, Giuliani, Mark Meadows, Donald Trump, and... Um, Yes, Lindsey Graham. So I think, yeah, we're looking at Trump being indicted because it's pretty obvious what has happened. But there's two or three other people energetically associated with him. I wonder if Eastman may also be indicted. This feels when you go into the energy, and I guess we'll find out more about it when the indictments come down in the next uh, two and a half, three weeks like two or three people working close to Trump. I'm assuming one of them is Giuliani were doing some type of phone pressure campaign. And it's this pressure campaign that people are gonna be finding out about. And when the pressure campaign didn't work, I think it was at that point when Donald Trump himself actually made a phone call. So who do we know called? We know that Lindsey Graham made a phone call in Georgia. We know that Mark Meadows is under investigation. We know some of these people have already received subpoenas. Uh, we know that the grand jury has made its recommendations. Three people close to Donald Trump were pressuring uh, uh, people in Georgia 
uh, to falsify documents about who had won in Georgia. So expect three people close together. They were making phone calls. That's what it looks like. The other thing uh, that I wanted to say is that expect more to come out about the mega yachts. As I said in previous remotes over Robert Mueller, he was trying to get onto the mega yachts and specifically get into the wiring, the communications, and also the logs, meetings, etc., that were taking place on these mega yachts. And of course, now we have the Fanta, it was called the Tanga. <laughs> but then they renamed it the Fanta. It was uh, taken by, I believe it was Spanish authorities, and it's now the yacht is being sent back to the United States. And of course, they're going to be scanning it for electronic information. Some of the yachts where some of these meetings were taking place, uh, also some of the uh, Shell Corporation and money laundering schemes, we know that some of those yachts were actually blown up uh, we're seeing a lot of that information coming out if you want to find out more through the e Seaman uh, channel. But that's kind of exciting. Also, expect more indictments and more heat coming on to foreign lobbyists. Uh, I think one of the people that's in trouble, as I had said before, is Adam Waldman. He was uh, working for Deripaska. He also met with uh, Julian Assange and may have been a go-between uh, and one of the people that was weaponizing the uh, stolen hacks from the DNC, the emails, etc. So that's what I have for you tonight. I apologize if I don't look that great. I'm still getting over a cold. Uh, bless you all. And on Thursday, I should be up and ready to go. And we'll be having another exciting hot topics. Be, ever, be well, everyone, and enjoy the ride. Take care.